In this video, I will be explaining what every block in Scratch does in only 5 minutes. Every Scratch block is categorized on the left by its use. Here there are 9 categories of blocks, each with a unique purpose. Let's get started with motion. Move 10 steps, moves the sprite, 10 steps, 10 units, 10 bananas in any direction it's facing. Turn 15 degrees. Turn the other 15 degrees. Go to random position. This block allows the player to be moved anywhere within the bounds. The very middle of the screen is 0, 0. These blocks make the player glide. Point towards and point in direction both affect the direction the character is facing and can be changed at will. Change X and change Y blocks are used to move the character along the coordinate system, whereas set X and set Y blocks are used to teleport a character to a position. This block causes the character to flip its direction when it hits the edge of the screen. Set rotation style has three options, left and right, all around, or don't rotate. Finally, ticking these boxes allow you to keep track and monitor the information and data. As we can all agree, looks are way better than personality and they're up next. Switch costume changes the appearance of the character by switching it to another frame or iteration of the player in the costumes tab. For effects, we have change color effect, fish eye, change world effect, pixelate, mosaic, brightness, and finally ghost. Clear graphic effects resets the character back to normal, but it's a shame you can't do that with your own face. You can figure this one out. Spamming this block a few times makes your cat into a lion. Don't ever use these blocks in your life. Next up is sound, and this is so important to tickle the player's senses. Play sound, meow, stops anything else from being played until it's finished, whereas start sound, meow, can interject anywhere at any time. Setting and changing the volume only affects the sounds that are being played within the sprite. Pitch makes the sound go higher. Finally, the pan left and right effect modifies which direction the sound comes from for that extra immersion. The events category contains blocks that get triggered when specific things happen. Most of these blocks tell you exactly what they do, so if you can just read. Changing this block to up arrow key pressed also triggers when the scroll wheel goes up or down. Broadcasting messages blocks allows you to communicate with other sprites so you can get them to do other things. The control section is next and it's mostly useful with other code. Here you'll find loops that repeat the code inside of them until a condition is met or forever. forever. Finally there are clone blocks which allow you to duplicate the sprite and run its own code. This is most helpful for things like particles. Sensing is next and it is the backbone of every project. The touch the touching block is the most useful and detects collisions with the mouse pointer or with other sprites. These other ones are the exact same but for colours. The distance 2 block cleverly utilises some mathematics to calculate the distance between two things. You can ask the player something that will appear on screen and record their answer in the answer block. This block is the base for every kind of movement as it indicates when any key you select is pressed. Equally important is detecting when the player clicks on something which can be done using the mouse down block. These blocks keep track of where the mouse pointer is on the stage so that you can use the numbers in complex formulas. This block allows the sprite to be dragged while playing the game. The timer blocks keep track of the timer that's running when the project starts. This little nugget is one of the most useful blocks in the library as it allows you to access any property from any other sprite or the background. Have you ever wanted to know the current month or day since 2000? Well, now you can. You can use the username block to call people out by name. The next section is operators and it's mostly used for maths related things. Here you can add, subtract, divide and multiply quantities as well as compare if one thing's bigger than another. This block comes in handy when comparing if a player's score is bigger than the high score or if they have enough money to buy something. The and, or and not blocks are used for joining two different clause together. An example of this is if someone beats the high score like earlier except their name is your friend Jeffrey, then you can stop them from getting the high score. These three operators work on words and strings to help make them other things. You can click on them to see what they do. Round rounds the input up to the nearest whole number. Mod gives you the remainder when the right number goes into the left. 5 mod 7 is 5, whereas 8 mod 7 is 1. This operator contains a plethora of mathematical options. Floor always rounds down no matter what. Ceiling always rounds up no matter what. Square root or squirt is the scaling the square of a number, and there's plenty more to explore. Variables are varying quantities that can be anything from a number to a word and represent things like money, health, and anything you can imagine. When making variables, you can make it so that every sprite can see the variable, only the sprite you're working in can see it. Cloud variables are saved online and they're updated for everybody at the same time. Finally, you can also make lists which keep track of multiple things at once, and I'm not going to go through that because I don't have enough time. Last but not least, there's custom blocks which, oh dang it, 